Greetings friends, welcome once again to my game room. Hey, this time I'm going to bring you uh, information on a game that is not one of the Peg Pass time series, but it still has the New Venture logo here on the front of it. Let me tell you a little bit about Battlefield. It was probably 15 years ago when my son and I were uh, playing some card games and we started to play the, the classic game of war, the old card game where uh, the two players pull a random card off the top and see if it matches who has the highest card wins. I said, boy, this is really not a game. This is an activity, but you have no control. You're making no decisions, no strategy, no tactics, nothing. It's just a matter of flipping cards. How about if we take that and add some rules to it, make it actually into a game so that there's some decisions to be made. There are other games like this on the market I've seen and played, but we just wanted to put our own little twist to the game. And at the time, um, we were pretty much involved in the Society for Creative Anachronism, which is the medieval recreation group. Uh, and so we said, well, let's give it a medieval theme and uh, we can incorporate uh, certain troops, different units, different strategies, different random events that happen on the battlefield um, and uh, turn it into a real game. And so that's what we did. I've also shared this with a lot of uh, young teenagers and uh, they really like playing a lot. It's just like I say, it's real quick, the rules are obvious, um, and there's a lot of twists and turns in here. So, uh, let me show you a little bit about uh, what the cards are, and uh, you can see the game actually played, and it describes kind of what's going on for you. And then we'll take it from there. The game comes with two decks, uh, a blue deck and a red deck, and each deck has 72 cards. The cards in both decks are the same. What you see here are the unit cards from the blue deck. They're ranked according to their power in the battlefield, from the peasants to the king. These forces also include mercenaries, which are not too powerful on their own, but they allow players to bring extra forces into the battle. Then the archers, of which there are many, have an advantage if the field is muddy, but not so if there is a strong wind blowing. After that we find the spearmen, the pikemen, and the swordsmen, and at a strength of seven are the squires, who can be promoted in the field if the king is present. The cavaliers are ranked eight, and the knights are at nine. In the lower left here, you see the royal family. The princess inspires the troops, adding one to each of their powers and bringing her champion to the field with an extra card. The queen also calls upon an extra card to help in the struggle. The gallant prince has a rank of ten, and adds one to each of the forces who share the battle with him, and the king ranks highest at twelve. Oh, except for the berserker. At fifteen, this is the most powerful fighter in your army, but he will only last one round, unless a miracle occurs. Speaking of miracles, there are two clerics in the deck who also inspire the troops and call for an extra card. In addition are the event cards, like these from the red deck. A few of these take effect immediately upon drawing them, but most set to the side of the battlefield and affect all the combatants with issues like the muddy field or the sun at your back. They also include a spy that allows you to see what the opponent is playing before reinforcements are deployed, and the plague, which takes out several of your units sight unseen before you continue your campaign. Now let's have a look at a game in progress. After shuffling their decks, each player lays out a row of three columns opposite to their opponents. You'll notice that the blue player has two cards in the first column. That first card was probably a mercenary, which allows another card to be played immediately. Then each player draws a hand of three cards, which are their reinforcements for this battle. These will be played upon their three columns, one card to each. They're played face down to hide their power until the battle begins. Once all reinforcements are assigned, the cards are revealed, and the conflicts resolved for each column. In this case, the right column results in a tie, so the players draw one additional card to add to their total. 
the blue player has been defeated in the right column. In fact, he's been defeated in all three. All the blue cards are moved to a permanent discard pile called the graveyard. The red player has one card in the graveyard at the left edge of the screen. This was the berserker who dies in the battle even if his column has won the conflict. The rest of the red cards were victorious and thus they go into a survivor deck. They will live to fight another day in future rounds. Now let's watch another round. The players begin to deploy their units. But wait! Blue has dealt a traitor card, which ends this battle abruptly, sending all of the blue units immediately to the graveyard. All the red units survive. Notice that the traitor card also goes into the graveyard. That's only fair. But it also means that the blue army does not need to fear that event again during the game. And now to another round. The red player has drawn a plague card. He immediately discards four units to the graveyard, sight unseen. As with the traitor, the plague goes into the graveyard, never to be seen again. The skirmish continues, the players discussing the card play as they go. Have a look at the blue player's hand. There are two event cards going to the side of the battlefield. Two cards which will affect how this battle plays out. Are these cards that hinder or help the blue army? Blue could really use a victory here. Those event cards called for replacements to be drawn and the turn continues. The red player sits confidently with his army in place while blue resolves yet another event. What could it mean? Oh no, one of his units is leaving the field. Must be a curse has befallen his most powerful combatant. Well, the battle must continue for king and country, so Blue assigns his reinforcements as best he can. All cards are revealed and columns resolved. One more defeat for the Blue Army, then a victory, then, calculating the effect of his event cards. Oh, one more defeat for the Blue. That was quite an eventful first few rounds, but as before, these events drawn by the blue player will not come up again. Therefore, the future is looking brighter despite these early setbacks. If we fast forward through a few more rounds, you can see the pile of survivors and the graveyards growing. When the draw decks run out, those survivor decks will get reshuffled, and the battle rages on with their new draw decks. I'll slow the action down now for a bit. Notice that the blue player is searching through his graveyard deck. While this is normally not done, he has drawn a miracle card, which resurrects a dead character. And so the battle goes until the war is won. Eventually, one player's entire army will be annihilated. But fear not, it's only a game. Now there are two other variations on the game that are available. Um, one of them, which I really like, uh, it seems to be pretty popular, is the American Civil War edition. I came out with this a few years ago when the 150th anniversary of that war. This one has, uh, as you would imagine, the units are not medieval. They are uh, generals, captains, majors, etc. Um, there, of course, is uh, uh, Grant and Lee. Uh, we even have the presidents in there. We have cards to represent the civilian organizations that were involved in the war. Um, we have sharpshooters, we have uh, infantry, uh, volunteers. There's a lot of different units there, of course, the cavalry. Uh, artillery is in there as well. And uh, otherwise, it's the same game as far as the balance goes and the rankings, but the theme is very interesting to a lot of people. And uh, that's, that's a, a neat uh, variation on it. Then we came out with this version, which is Battlefield Space. Now this one is a little bit different. Um, at first glance, the battlefield itself looks the same as the other games, but the uh, units, of course, are spaceships, but they represent different races within this fictional galaxy. And uh, the races are divided into the two teams, red and blue, but within those decks, 
there are some races that reinforce each other, kind of like the mercenaries. There are others that say, for example, if one of these is here, its value is so-and-so, but if there's two of them there, the values are higher because they reinforce each other. So there's a race that has, a, has ships called a swarm, and the more you have on the field, the more powerful they are. But uh, So it's a, a little twist on the thing if you like the sci-fi theme and you want to think a little bit more about what's out there on the field and how you use your reinforcements. Uh, Battlefield Space is the one you want to look into. So those are the Battlefield games, and uh, this is the, the original, the medieval version of the game. I uh, hope you get a chance to check those out someday. Um, they're very affordable at Red Hand Toys, and uh, we'll get those out to the mail to you right away if you uh, want to click that link in the notes below and order one. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, as always, I wanted to remind you to play every day.